Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn how you can actually observe the internet connectivity status of the user so you just get a, a live updates of whether the user is currently connected to the internet or not. And sometime in the past I already made a video about that which had one, one disadvantage, or at least the implementation I had there, and that was that it really only uh, listened to whether the hardware of our device would technically allow an internet connection. So if Wi-Fi was enabled, if um, the mobile data was enabled, and it would, for example, show that we're not connected if airplane mode is enabled. So if there is no way for the device to kind of connect in the first place. But we all know this, that when we are maybe at a hotel at a free Wi-Fi hotspot, that, that sometimes we need to, first of all, register or sign up to some kind of terms and conditions before we have that real connectivity available. And the new approach that I will show you here uh, is also something I, I learned about, but that will be something that considers all scenarios, so really checks if, if the user is really connected to the internet. And by the way, PL Coding Black Week is still going on, so you can get 30% on all courses, on all bundles, you can get a big discount on the mobile dev campus. I'll put the link down below, check it out, and happy learning. So you can see here on the left side on my emulator, we are connected to Wi-Fi, it says connection is true. If we switch on airplane mode, then this will still work. If we take a look, you can see suddenly we get no internet connection, but I've also prepared my other device, which is technically connected to Wi-Fi, but you can see this little exclamation mark here, um, which says, okay, you are connected to Wi-Fi, but internet actually isn't available. And you could, for example, model this by just going to your uh, Wi-Fi router and uh, plugging out the actual internet cable so that your router still streams some kind of signal without actually being connected to the internet. And that's actually pretty easy to do in Android. And the approach that, that I share here is very close to my previous approach. Um, so what we actually want to do is want to go to our uh, root package and create something like a connectivity observer. Make this an interface. So we could also make use of this across our project. And the only thing that this connectivity observer really needs is a variable for the connectivity status or just is connected, for example. This would then be a flow of type boolean in this case. Um, so here, let's just implement um, a simple boolean flow where we say you are connected or you're not connected. Uh, depending on how fine-grained you need that, you might want to also uh, use different values here. Uh, so we would also be able to detect when the user is about to lose internet, when they then finally lost it, when they are regaining it. So these are also events we could react to and respond to, uh, but I think in most cases we're just fine with uh, are you connected or not. So then, Let's go to root package again and create the actual implementation for this connectivity observer, which I'll call Android Connectivity Observer. Make this a class. This will need our context in the constructor. Since the way this works is we will make use of a so-called system service, uh, which is what, the, what provides the information about the connectivity status, so something the Android operating system provides. And we should also implement our connectivity observer interface. We can then hit command I to override this is connected flow and actually implement this here. But the first thing we need is a reference to this connectivity manager, which we get from our context reference. So we can say a private val connectivity manager, and we can get this with context get system service. Mm, let's take the bottom one here that does not take any parameters. And we pass in connectivity manager here from android.net. And then we can just make use of this connectivity manager to listen to these connectivity updates. And in the end, the way this works is just with a traditional callback, which fires every single time, um, there is some sort of change to the internet status, the internet connectivity of the user. And whenever we have a callback and we want to transform these callback events to a flow, then we need to use a callback flow. <laughs> so that is what we will use here, a callback flow, in which we will then declare the callback which is just an anonymous class. So we say object of type network callback, this one here. And we can implement this. And if we now hit command O, we can override, um, flexibly override certain functions that we care about here. So you can see it triggers, for example, when the network is available, when we are losing it, when we finally lost it, when it's not available at all. So this uh, probably um, relates to when we turn on um, airplane mode or when that is turned on. We have a function on capabilities changed, which is crucial here for our implementation. So let's just override these first five functions and start with on unavailable. If internet is unavailable, well, then we just want to send false into our callback flow. So we say, no, we're not connected. And we can do this in here with try send. Try send, and we simply say false in that case. 
And this will simply be a flow emission we sent into this flow we can then later on listen to in our view model, for example. Same thing for when we lost the internet. We could now debate about um, what we should send in the on losing case. We could also just uh, leave that because if we then finally lost it, it will trigger here with this on lost callback. So let's remove this actually. And on available, so our internet is definitely available, we want to send true in here. But the magic now happens in this on capabilities changed. Because as I said, by default, um, if we just make use of these three functions, which already sound like they fully observe the internet connectivity, but they really, as I said, only uh, relate to the hardware. So is Wi-Fi enabled? Okay. Yes, uh, internet is available. Is airplane mode enabled? Okay, internet is definitely not available. This is what these functions detect. But if Wi-Fi is available, but you're still not connected to, to a real source of internet, then these functions alone can detect that. For that, we have to use this on capabilities change function. So we get these network capabilities, which really just contain information about the, the current network connection. And we can get the actual connected status there by saying, network capabilities that has capability and the capability that we care about here is connectivity manager dot capability or is that in there or is it network capabilities network capabilities dot capability validated so the network or the, the connectivity manager will actually validate the connection to check if the user is really connected and this typically only works by really pinging a remote server like Google, where we assume the server must be online and then checking if we, if we get a response back in time. And this is what the connectivity manager does for us. And if that ping comes back, it will call this connection validated. So this is the capability you want to check for. And then again, say try send this time with uh, whether we are connected or not. And that's already our callback. Right now, we of course only declared it here and don't really passed it somewhere that it also will really fire. Let's do this below the callback in our callback flow, where we say connectivity manager register, um, and we actually need to assert this as non-null uh, non here with this double exclamation mark operator because the system service certainly exists. Um, I want to say connectivity manager register default network callback, and we pass in this callback. And the way callback flows work is um, because typically callbacks uh, work in a way that we need to register these and unregister, the, uh, unregister these again when they are not needed anymore. That way, we can also declare this await close block, which will trigger when the um, when the flow is actually cancelled. So, for example, if we launch this in view model scope and collect the flow in there, in view model scope, uh, the coroutine scope that is launched. Uh, where the flow is launched in is cancelled. For example, when we never get away, then we will automatically unregister, the, unregister this uh, network callback again. And this happens in the await close block. So just to clean up any resources from this callback flow, we can just say unregister network callback and we pass in this callback. You can see um, we get an error here because we missed this access network state permission. So that's a separate permission, but we can just add this here to our manifest and then the error will go away. So this is now our flow that we can make use of, for example, in a view model. So if we go ahead and just have a very basic, I don't know, connectivity view model or so, make this a view model, which would then get reference to our connectivity observer in here, uh, connectivity observer, make sure to actually pass the abstraction. We can also swap this out in a test case, for example. And here we could then say, well, is connected is equal to connectivity observer, that is connected, which is currently a flow, we would like to observe this as a state. So I'm going to convert this uh, cold flow to a hot flow with state in to a state flow. And we can say, we do this in view model scope. So we bind this flow or we launch this flow in view model scope, which as I said, will then automatically also stop listening to these updates when this view model is cleared, when we navigate back, for example. We say sharing started while subscribed with a timeout millis of five seconds. So we won't further observe this if the app is in the background for more than five seconds. And lastly, oops, the default value of this is connected flow is, let's say, false. So we assume uh, the user is not connected unless the uh, observer then tells us otherwise. And now we just have a perfect state flow here in our view model that updates whenever the connectivity updates. So let's go to main activity and make use of that. And I think for the actual view model initialization logic in Compose, I'm missing the dependencies. So there, are, I think uh, there are these lifecycle dependencies. Let's try if we can initialize this up here, since this is really just for demo, our private value view model, by view models, pass in our connectivity view model. And since it has a constructor argument, we also need to have this factory producer, which 
gives us a view model factory. So we say view model factory. And then here we can initialize our view model. So the connectivity view model with our connectivity observer being set to our Android connectivity observer. And we say, okay, the context is simply our application context. Give this one a capital M. And I think this is uh, how we should be able to initialize this view model. Haven't used this approach in a long while, but let's try this out. Taking this view model reference now in our compose code and maybe just having a box here where we center a text that says whether we're connected or not. So modifier, fill max size, content alignment is center. And in here, or rather somewhere above here, we can say is connected by view model, is connected, collect as state. Um, normally I would use collect as state with a lifecycle, but again, that would require a dependency and that's not the focus of this video. I, I do this in all my other videos. Um, so let's just import collect as state here. This will be just fine. And then here in this box, we say we have a text. And the text is just different depending on whether we're connected. So we just say um, connected and we pass in our Boolean, something like this. We can also pass in our inner padding to this box so the scaffold doesn't complain. And what I'm actually not sure about is if we need internet, uh, internet permission in our manifest. So we have this access network state permission, but we might also need uh, internet permission. Regardless of whether we need this here, you definitely need this in any type of app where you want to access the network state because um, why would you check for the user's internet connection if you wouldn't want to use internet in your app? So let's do this and then I would say we can launch this. Let's first of all launch it here on my Pixel um, Pixel 6, yes, where I'm not connected as you can see. We run this app. Okay, it complains something about the compile SDK. I still don't know why the default project setup in Android Studio gives us a build error, but let's go in here and change these to 35. Then that error will be resolved. Okay, let's relaunch this. There we go. The app is launching and apparently it crashed probably because of our view model. I might've missed something. Let's take a look on LockCat and check this together. There we go, here's our big error. Um, no initializer set for given class connectivity view model. All right, you know what I'll do? I'll just add the dependencies to properly initialize a view model. <laughs> so I will go to our version catalog here. We will have a lifecycle version and then we need to add two dependencies, which I'll just copy paste over. You can find the link to this in my GitHub repository in the description, of course. But let's just paste these two dependencies, runtime compose for the collect as state with a lifecycle um, function and the view model compose to initialize and get a view model reference in a composable. We can then go to our app level Gradle file and also add these here, implementation, libs, what was that? Uh, libs, life, libs Android X Lifecycle Runtime Compose. Libs Android X Lifecycle Runtime Compose. And Runtime View Model it was, I think, right? No, View Model Compose. Without runtime, dot compose. Sync this. And then we should hopefully be able to properly initialize a view model in our main activity somewhere here in the composable by just going in here saying val view model is equal to our view model composable now. So this one here, which initializes a main uh, actually connectivity view model. And in here we can then provide this connectivity view model instance and get rid of the view model up here. So now we have a proper view model instance. We can swap this out if you want with collect as stable lifecycle, and then relaunch the app. There we go, it's launching, yes. And now we get this connected false string here. Um, cool, so that is definitely correct. We're not connected, but let's also try this on the other device, on the emulator, which is connected. This one here, launching this, and here, take a look, it's launching, and it says false, because we are in airplane mode. And the moment we turn on airplane, uh, turn off airplane mode again, then one moment we are connected and it switches to true. Cool, that seems to work. I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, down below, you can check out my premium courses right now, Black Friday week, biggest sale of the year. Check this out, don't miss this. And uh, I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.